Hello, my name is Cynthia and welcome to my Flosstube channel. I'm happy to be here with you today to talk about my needlework and things I've been making, things I've crafted, and some plans up ahead. Also a giveaway at the end, so stay tuned for that. And it is Thursday, October 28th, 2021 today. I have several finishes that I wanted to share. Not the finish that I wanted to share. I hopefully will finish uh, my largest sampler to date within the next 24, 48 hours, but my timing for filming is limited. So I wanted to show you all the other things I made before Halloween, and then I will come back and show you the other finish that is so close if you've been watching me on Instagram. And um, the first thing I wanted to share, thank you for your love on Instagram. This is a little bit of a, um, what's the word? <laughs> going out on a limb to make this guy. He um, is not like the pattern exactly. This comes from an Etsy shop called Happy Heart Patterns. That's what he's supposed to look like. And I actually made that scarecrow two years ago and sold him to a friend on Floss Tube. But this guy, I want it to be a little different. He has the same kind of raggedy Andy smile but he has obviously a much more prim take i call him ichabod long legs the first time i made this pattern i didn't follow the directions exactly and i don't remember if i did that intentionally or um if it was an oversight but his arms and legs are not actually attached to his body um i have them all sewn and glued or i can't so i can't show you but he's stuffed with sawdust so he's pretty um solid here and look how long he is i can't fit him all in but these legs aren't attached to the body. They're actually attached to the pants, according to the pattern. So he ended up being huge, which is fine. He sits on my fireplace mantle. I'll insert a picture of that here. Um, and it is fine for there, but he is really big. I think you can actually hang him on the wall, too. He has um, kind of a crusty shirt that I sewed from the Fat Quarters at Walmart. I got these after Christy Potter showed them on Java Girl Stitches. I went and got some of this fabric and I love it. And I really like it after I dipped it in um, camel colored writ dye. I just kind of let it soak in that and it looks perfectly grungy. His pants were a skirt from Goodwill and I put a patch on there. And then he's just sewn from muslin. I love his little feet. That's probably my favorite part is the, um, oh, hang on just a second, Dahlia has Anna's hat. <laughs> okay, hopefully Dahlia is settling down a little bit over here. She's kind of on a rampage this morning. I have to go to parent-teacher conferences, so I can't wait for her to fall asleep. I've got to go ahead and talk about all my pretty things. But um, this scarecrow, like I said, has this funky pumpkin head. He fits in with my pumpkin head people plans. <laughs> Lots of peas there. And um, I love the crow. It was sewn from, it's glued on, sewn from muslin with, um, it doesn't have padding here. It's just layers of stitching. And I had a request for a tutorial on these and I kind of go back and forth because this isn't my pattern or my design. Um, I will definitely link the pattern below. It's very simple, basically just tubes of muslin, four different tubes of muslin and a shape of a shoe that you cut out. I know Lindy Stitches did a primitive doll, um, kind of fast forward of her making her pumpkin head doll, which is another adorable one. Um, I'd like to make that sometime too. But this one, like I said, is an adaptation just in that I painted him orange. It wasn't really a bigger shape. I almost thought I should have done a bigger shape, but he's just tall and skinny. So that's why he's Ichabod Long Legs. I thought he had to have two names like Matilda Hornbuckle and Reverend Squashbottom from uh, Laureate Not Forgotten Farm. So he is super cute. And then um, this little pumpkin head guy to stay on the theme. I showed you last time from 
prairie schooler. It's the prairie seasons and it goes on the window. I love this finish because the bow stays the same all year long. That's the only one I have like that. And I think that's really handy. <laughs> so this little red window I picked up from Target and um, I just leave it like that. The, um, oh, it got a little bit of glue on the bow. I'm trying to undo it here. I wanted to show you real quick the um, lacing. It ended up being such a easier um, finish to lace because I just don't do well with sticky board. I know a lot of people use that, but I find lacing to be so much more forgiving as far as shifting things around, like getting that bottom line straight and equidistant on the sides is a little tricky. I put a little more space at the top because of this bow. So that was done intentionally, but I just think lacing looks so um, finished and professional. So if you haven't given it a try, there's several tutorials. I know uh, Kitten Stitcher has one and so does um, Elizabeth Ankin Stitch. And I've done one before in fast motion. It's just a matter of um, keep adding to your thread as you go and it looks really nice. Use one continuous length of thread, I mean. So there's Prairie Schooler Autumn. I have two, one more season to go just the winter and I've started the house and part of the snow on that one and part of the border. So I'll hope to have that done before 2021, maybe in January, but definitely this series is almost finished, which is so gratifying. The other thing I made and actually had shown a picture of last time, there's actually several things within this little display. Um, this is my little witch's display. I'll probably put it in my curio cabinet eventually because Dahlia loves this witch. She keeps trying to steal her. Um, she had already chewed off the hair. There's a little bit of doggy drool here, but she's primitive, so it's all good. I love her little hat, the way that turned out. I used another pattern I had from, I think, a Chestnut Junction piece, and this is actually Chestnut Junction as well. I just reduced it by 50% on my printer, and it made it a lot harder. I think it goes across a lot of crafts that when you do something tiny, it's much more challenging so um she's cute she like i said wasn't my favorite thing i've made but i do like her in a little tiered tray and i love her little pinafore she has a um, couple of striped legs and mary jane's painted on and her hair is fun it's still got some sawdust in it from my other finishes there but um I'll have to put her away so Dahlia can't get her, but she fits really cute just right in the top of that tray. And like I said, I love her hat. So there's my little Raggedy Ann Witch. And this is a start, finish, and FFO. There's a name for that, but I can't remember the acronym. Um, and I'm not 100% sold on the, the silk that I have on the side there. I might do something else. I wanted to find a broom to go with this. Um, I have the chart here, Lizzie Kate. Why, yes, I can't drive a stick. This is always out of stock, and it came in. It's only like a $4 pattern, and I, I always thought it was cute. I used to drive a Volkswagen Bug, and it had a um, manual transmission, and my husband could not drive a stick. He got us stranded in the middle of San Francisco one time when we were dating, and we were getting honked at and flipped off, and he had to get out of the car and let me drive because I could drive a stick. It was funny. I still give him a hard time about that. He can drive a stick now, but at the time he couldn't. And this always made me think of that story. But I tried to get this um, finish, just I try to do new things a lot of times, like, well, let me try it this way. There was a problem getting this even, but I don't think it's super obvious. And I do like the way that little fold of fabric worked out. I even did a top stitch on top of my stitching, which I've never done before. And it would have been really nice. It didn't quite fix my problem, but you can't hardly see it and it did help a little bit. <laughs> My fabric kept sliding when I was stitching. I'm not a, I'm not a straight sewer. I'm still working on that. My dad was here um, weekend before last and he helped me a ton with my sewing machine. He used to be a sewing machine mechanic back in the 70s when he, um, he was let go of a job and he kind of um, bluffed his way into being a sewing machine mechanic and just figured it out as he went. He had done some sewing machine um, maintenance in the Navy, so he knew a little bit about it, but he helped me with my machine and taught me some stuff about it. It's an old new home that's probably 70, 80 years old, and it's a, just a, a workhorse, but for some reason I have a hard time sewing straight. So I'm still practicing. I was a little bit out of practice, and I was a little bit, you know how you, Sometimes they're in a funk and when you try to finish or sew, you just 
keep making mistakes. It was kind of one of those days. So I maybe should have waited, but I really wanted to get this done before Halloween. And it's still cute. It's got this kind of purpley, blacky brown fabric from Joann's. I really like that. And it's stuffed with sawdust. So I'm almost out of sawdust. I have to have my dad get me some more. You also have seen this little witch from Snowflower Diaries. She's super cute. This is my second one in this series. They stitch up super, super quickly. And um, I put a little eyelash fringe. I had some of this yarn, gosh, probably 15, 20 years ago, and I had some purple in it. Her hair is actually purple. I don't know if you can tell. That's Weeks Dye Works um, Marlin or Merlin. Merlin. That's it. Yeah like the wizard and it's real subtle, but I like that. So I wanted to pull that out. And then, um, I have some ribbon here. I, I don't sew the ribbon all the way in because it will pucker when I do. So I just sew it on the ends and I put just a dab of glue in here and it seems to stay just fine. But I thought that looked cute in the same purple fabric or it doesn't look purple right now, but in person it does. It's kind of like a blacky purple and then a polka dot with the ribbon just sew up the back so and also stuffed with sawdust and then this pattern i lost i was trying to show it in my um free patterns little parade i did last video and it had i was sitting on it <laughs> i couldn't find it anywhere i was sitting on it this is a piece of a barbara anna design that i didn't care as much for if you do free if you google free barbara anna designs patterns there's a um whole website of freebies and I can't remember the name of it now um I can try to link it below I've linked it before and um I did the Barbara Anna elves from there if you remember from a couple years ago and it's kind of a funky looking witch and I thought I don't care for her as much but I really like these pumpkins so I just took that one corner of the design and I stitched that up I think it almost looks like a Brenda Gervais little you know um jack-o-lantern jubilee thing it's really cute Dahlia really liked it too. She grabbed it off the counter and chewed off two pom-poms. So, whew, she is a handful. But this is primitive style. She has a little dog drool on it. It's okay. And it has the um, ribbon in the back too. It's very tiny, but I thought it went cute kind of with a... I like to think of things in series. I don't know if that's just because I like to decorate and things or... If it's just a natural collector kind of side of me, I always want to do things in like threes. Um, and it does help for things to cut and coordinate. So I have it all in this tiered tray um, with kind of the black and white and the dark, dark purple. And then I put that one in there too because it didn't mass match my monster mesh. And I like it with those pumpkins for my friend Ginger. So she's not quite arranged in there like I had her, but you get the idea. <laughs> this was a... Um, tear tray from Target, just $5, I think. So that's kind of a fun little witch's display. And I had the scary berry to do still, but um, my focus was kind of pulled from the um, All Creatures Great and Small that I'm working on. So I think that's all my finishes. Did I forget anything? Nope, that's it. So let me go ahead and get the whips that I worked on. I participated in 24 hours of cross stitch. So I have that to show you and I have a giveaway to announce and another one to um, have you all um, comment on to win next time. So let me get that out and I'll be right back. I had already referred to my largest sampler to date that I am almost finished with. And that is of course, All Creatures Great and Small by Barbara Anna Designs. I um, have just been plugging away at this. And as you can see, it's very, very close. <laughs> There's lots of details in this. So I was just finishing up a few random leaves. All of the um, leaves have kind of a peach colored tip to the red um, bud there. So I'm going around and doing, I just have this top part to do in that corner. So that's almost done. The rest of the border is complete. The um, little teapot there above the lady that's the milkmaid. I called her a bucket lady once. She's obviously a milkmaid. <laughs> and um, the tree, those little two motifs and a cup, I think. So three little tiny motifs there. I don't know why I didn't finish those. I just kind of hop around as I get bored. So that's kind of willy nilly. And then I have a fruit basket above that horse and rabbit. And I was... Backstitching the jockey. I don't know if I like that or not. He is 
um, the charted color of white, but as you can see, my fabric is not very um, dark. I think Country Mocha is the ch um, charted color. This is Mallow by, um, is it a Zweigart? I think it's, his, yeah, it's got the orange by Zweigart, and it's actually a blend with cotton and, um, or with uh, some other fiber and linen. It's not 100% linen, so it does have a natural kind of, it almost has like golden and brown nubbies in it, like a oatmeal-y kind, but not super obviously. Yeah, you can see it there. So from a distance, you can't see it as well, but when you're stitching, sometimes you get like a brown kind of piece, and um, the white does not show up at all. In fact, that rabbit was charted white, and I'm starting to change, and the bird, I'm starting to change those things to gray, because I just didn't like the white, and I didn't want to backstitch all of it. I did on some of it. Where did I backstitch? I backstitched a white um, critter somewhere. I can't remember where. But I just felt like, let's just change it to gray, and it'll be fine. But I have a few more leaves to do in that wreath, and that is it. So... <laughs> I love it. I will I will frame it before I show it to you. I already have my frame as I showed you. So I'm going to have to pick up a piece of um, acid-free map board. I'll probably have them cut it for me. And then I can stretch it and show you next time all framed. So that was my goal by October 31st. My friends that I Zoom with, Michelle and uh, Kristen, are both finishing a huge um, sampler as well. In fact, Kristen from Blue Bonnet's um, and Whiskey just finished yesterday. I'll link her Instagram below. You've got to go see her sampler that she finished. The I think it's Ann Roberts. It's beautiful. So we're all finishing up in the end of October and cheering each other on. So like I said, if I have to stay up all night on Sunday, I will finish her before November. But I don't think that'll be a problem. I actually anticipate doing that sooner. So that's really exciting. But um, I didn't have as much work on other things because of those little details that I was finishing and the focus I was putting on it. But during 24 hours of cross stitch, I let myself pull out a few whips that I was really missing and wanting to work on. I've shown you some of them already, but I'll show you how much I got done and maybe one or two hours of work during um, 24 hours of cross stitch marathon. I enjoy those very much. I did take this um, house all the way to the top. The last time I showed you, oh, my rings are coming off the um I think there's a piece of floss that fell the house wasn't all the way boxed in and I'm starting on the roof there I also added the pumpkin and the beginning of the vase and the vase is an interesting thread I think I may have shown it last time but I don't know if you can tell just how variegated that is it's got a lot of different colors but I thought it looked really pretty with the blues and kind of the peaches of the piece so I think it's going to look neat. It'll make mine a little bit different, but I like that sometimes. So I'll probably um, not work on this for the rest of the year, but I have a plan for next year to touch um, the majority, uh, almost all of my whips with um, whip go. So I'll tell you more about that as the year goes on, but mostly I'm still working in my rotation and then I'm going to add in a whip go goal just so that these um, beautiful projects aren't sitting collecting dust so that one got some 24 hour love and sorry for some crinkles i should have taken this out um but this piece also almost got some restitching the um dove santa dove and the key by barbara anna another one of hers had um a hard i, I had a hard time with the fabric getting the wing of the dove to look the way I wanted. That top shadow on it was, um, in fact, I need to fix this last stitch there, was the color that um, I had substituted and um, it was too dark. The wing was like brown and then the dove was white. So I changed that to Ecru, just straight up DMC Ecru, along with that natural dinky dye silk. And then I started framing in that house. So a lot of what I did, oh, I've kind of got that folded. A lot of what I did was actually unstitching because I pulled out my house that I had done and I pulled out that whole wing and just restitched it. But I'm happy with it now. And I hope to have this done for Christmas. It's really not too much. It's just that little house to do and some snow. And I love stitching with the white silk. So I think it really pops on that witchelt. Sea Lily, this is 32 count and I'm using two strands. 
So I probably could have gotten away with one strand on that silk, but I wanted to make sure that it was really nice and covered with snow. You, you know, it's a little bit tricky sometimes. So that one got some work during 24 hour. And the last one, I'm going to pick up as soon as I finish All Creatures. This will be a focus for November, and I hope to finish it. I'm trying to be more, um, oh, what's the word? I'm trying to be less distracted. <laughs> when I'm stitching, a lot of times I'm, I've got my phone there and I'll be looking at Instagram or I'm watching something on TV, which is fine. I mean, I can't stitch all the time, but a lot of my stitching time I find is very um, interrupted. And so I'm trying to be more um, focused, things like the 24 hour marathon. I'll set my timer and I'll be like, don't get up for 30 minutes. Let's see if you can actually focus on this. And that helps me. I have just a touch of ADD. So um, this pattern I love, though, from Christmas at Hollyberry Farm. I'm doing all of the Hollyberry Farms pieces. I have three as two as whips, and I have the spring one in my stash. So that is a goal that has probably got some high priority for me, but this one, I, I feel like I've got a lot done on. I know there's still several motifs over here to finish around, but they're much smaller, and that house is very well underway. It's just lots of solid fill-in stitching, which I love to do. So I want to finish that, and I also love doing this border. I'm using DMC in my kind of popcorn method where I take um, a lighter, I don't have the threads right here, a lighter and a darker, I think it's 934 and 935. And I kind of just do three or four stitches here, three or four stitches there. And it kind of mimics a hand dyed um, effect. It's not blended, I'm just doing kind of like I call a popcorn effect, <laughs> just here and there. And it's subtle, but I do like it. And then um, the red was my hand dyed red that I had for my Aunt Ruth. I call it Aunt Ruth red. And the, dilk, the dinky dye silk again. I was combining dinky and silk there. <laughs> so want to finish that hopefully um, in November, but we'll see how that goes along. I'm kind of rearranging my rotation as I go through the month because that All Creatures Great and Small was so close to a finish that I kind of abandoned my Hawkorn Hollow Village and some other things to just rev that along. I have some goals for the um, rest of the year to finish my magic contract with my guild. So we'll see how that goes. But those were the things I worked on. Like I said, not a ton. I had a few um, fabrics and floss that came in the mail that I wanted to show you just so you can see them. Sometimes it's fun to see fabric that you maybe wonder about. What does that look like? And some Threadworks floss that I'm using for a secret project, but I'll give you a little sneak peek of and a giveaway. So let me get those things out and I'll be right back. Wanted to share a tiny bit of haul with you just because I like to see fabrics that I wonder about. Um, I know it's not completely in person, but it's a little better than a computer monitor. So this fabric I've wanted to see in person, dark cobblestone Lugana. My friend Kippy, the academic stitcher, used this for a scarecrow piece and I really Loved it. She did some over dyeing with taupe to make it kind of more modeled, and that was really pretty too. But I got that for this winter whirly gig. I think snow will look really pretty on this, and it's just kind of a neutrally brown gray, as you can see. It goes either way, so that's a nice fabric. And I just got a little tiny, um, what is this, sixteenth of a yard, so I can see the fabric before I commit to a larger piece. I wanted to finish, I've been working on the um, Chalk for the Home series for quite a while, and I debated between the Christmas um, Holly Jolly Farm and the snow, but this will be able to stay out longer. I can put it up for Christmas and then keep it up, and I do love those kind of turquoise colors since it'll go on my turquoise shutter, and this is Basalt by Zweigart. I thought this was perfect. It's actually going to allow me to um, skip all of the little, um, what are they called? Those, uh, stitches around the edge that are done in the, oh, come on. What is that called? Smyrna cross. <laughs> I can skip all the Smyrna crosses around because this fun, um, kind of spattered fabric looks like a snowstorm to me. And it's going to be, I hope, dark enough to show. I actually got Anchor White from Joann's. I, um, have been an Anchor fan for a long time, ever since I started, um, 
all creatures, even maybe before, and I haven't tried it on a spool yet. So I like the idea of just buying a couple of these to make all the snow and the chalk. So that one is um, gonna be started. I'm not sure I'm gonna work on it a ton, but I am not doing any starts in 2022. Too. So I'll have to start that. Oh, sorry. I'll have to start that in the next little bit and call it a whip. It's actually part of a series, so I think I can kind of get around that anyway. I consider the series a whip until it's done, which is why I wanted to get that finished. I don't like having my shutter empty for four months out of the year. Actually, eight months because I keep the sunflowers up for a long time. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you was some Threadworks um, flosses that I got, and they're right in front of me. This is a secret stitch for my friend Kristen. We do an exchange with my Zoom friends, and um, I had a design in mind um, for her, and I, I won't go, I could explain more about it, but I, I don't want to ruin it, any surprises. I just wanted to show you these thread works because as I'm collecting them, I like to show them in person. This is wrought iron by Threadworks 20 yards, and I forgot to say that's what I stitched the Lizzie Kate um, I can drive a stick in. And you can't see the variegation super well, but it's there. Do you see her skirt? It's almost like a purpley blue and a um, kind of olivey, just kind of muddy color. But it's pretty well named for raw iron. I thought I wanted it for kind of a moody color. And then this one is just a DMC. This is the uh, Threadworks Shanghai nights that I did my autumn finish with. Oh, I've already got it at the bottom of the pile there, but I showed you that last time. Just a really pretty fall kind of color. I'm going to use that in this stitch as well. This one is new to me. It's called Spanish Olives, and I love that. I'm a big sucker for a variegated green. If you're looking for something in a piece that has a lot of grass, this is 20 yards for $4 it would be a great value for an antique sampler. So sometimes the greens are really bright and when you get them, it's like, oh, that's not a sampler color, but I thought this was. That's really nice. So Spanish olives. And then this is a little dinky dye silk I got in mustard. So I really like the gold color. You might kind of have a hint of what the piece is gonna be about, but I'm trying to keep it secret. So I'll be showing you that um, in a, about six weeks. The other thing I bought was um, for my Sal coming up with Ginger Shoal. I said her name incorrectly last time. I don't know where that came from. Um, this is Blackbird Design, What Remains is Love. I won it in a giveaway from our guild. Sorry for the glare. I think y'all have seen it before though. But my plan was to switch it up just a little bit because pink is not my favorite. Um, and I know these are beautiful pinks. They're not, you know, bubble gummy or anything, but I'm going to kind of experiment with making it just a little bit deeper with this dinky dye variegated silk. I thought that would be pretty for the flowers and the border. Make it just a little bit darker to go in my home versus the pink. So that is one that is out of stock a lot of times on one, two, three stitch, but it's very pretty. Shades of wine. So there's some threads um, and fabrics that you may not have seen. A couple of stitchy kindness gifts that I wanted to show. Um, in case you have, I've had a few people say that they're interested in this um, Wicked Stepmother flosses and Frankie's been so generous with me and is going to be generous with you too. I have a giveaway to share, um, but let me show you some of these colors. Some of them are new. Love Letters is her um, kind of ecruy white variegated color. It's perfect for, you know, some of those prim designs or even for something else if you want some variegation and it's called Love Letters. That's a really pretty one. This is Purple Rain, a deep kind of moody purple. Really like that. And then this one is Crystal Blue. That's a really pretty color. I might use that in my snowman pieces. It looks like a good snow companion. And then this one is Falling Leaves. Isn't that gorgeous? I love that, Frankie. That would be perfect for the kind of autumn piece I had done. I had already started that, or I would have probably used this when I got it. And Gray Ghost is awesome. Very nice variegation. That's one of the things I really appreciate about Frankie's flosses. And here's Cinnamon. It's kind of a, just a muddy reddish brown, perfectly called Cinnamon. And Nutcracker. Very nice tan. So these are 
really pretty. Oh, here's another limited edition one called Autumn Sweater. Just check out her Etsy sh shop. I'll link it below. I know it's hard to find overdyes right now with, um, you know, all the shortages. Hold on a second. But if you want to try someone new, I would highly recommend Wicked Stepmother. And on that vein, I'll do the announcement of the winner of the other giveaway, but this is next time's giveaway from Frankie. She is giving away one of these cool waxers. She gave one to me and one to you. This is a witch's hat. Very nice beeswax and some mystery flosses. I didn't want to unwrap it because she has it so cutely packaged. So if you are interested in the wicked stepmother, here's her card, um, flosses, then just say below floss, F-L-O-S-S. -S. And let's see, what's a question? I asked your favorite fall pattern last time. Let me say your favorite Christmas pattern. I'm gonna be stitching Christmas at Hollyberry in November. So tell me your favorite Christmas pattern. If you don't stitch Christmas, just tell me your favorite pattern that you worked on recently. I always like to hear that. And use the word F-L-O-S-S, -S, floss if you would be interested in trying this. You must be over 18, and I do need you to reside in the U.S. Um, lower 48 because of all of our shipping crises right now. I would hate to just send this off to be lost. So U.S. only. Again, I'm working on an international giveaway soon, but um, this will be U.S. only. And please be a subscriber. I forget to mention that, but that is a big help to my channel. I still, I used to be about half and half, and I'm still about 60-40 with 60% subscribers that view my channel and 40% that don't. So if you would be so kind, head over and click the subscribe button. And there is a bell that will notify when I post videos. My schedule is determinant on my four kids and my dog and a lot of other things going on with our church. So I wish I could have a regular schedule, but I don't. But if you hit the bell, um, you would be notified. So subscriber, safe floss. There's that giveaway. The ever, other giveaway I have is the B scap from Miss Kathy. She is Carolina Carolina Cross Stitcher on, on Instagram, which is where you can find her beautiful B scap scissor holder made by her husband Peter and she was so kind to send this to me kind of as a bereavement gift and just a thank you for my videos and also one for you so I asked you two videos ago to use the word B and I haven't actually picked the winner yet but I am going to do that and insert the winner here okay here's the comment for B see how many people entered 158 people entered and let me pick a winner Statford Stitcher okay congratulations Statford Stitcher comment and send me an email with your information so congratulations if you won the b skep. If not, I encourage you to go over to Instagram and let Kathy know you would like one. Um, if you would, they're just a handy thing to have and they're beautiful. So congratulations to the winner. Please contact me either on Instagram or my email will be listed below and I will give you two weeks to let me know that you would like to claim this prize and Kathy will be mailing it to you. Um, I had one other quick um, stitchy kindness. I just wanted to say thank you to Stitching Rachel. That's her Gmail. This um, little bee drawer pattern was emailed to me as something that she had designed herself. It almost looks like kind of a black work design and I would love to do that this summer with my bee wall. So thank you so much, Rachel, for sending that to me. That was very thoughtful of you. I have a parent teacher conference in just a few minutes, so I will go ahead and let you go. As I said, I'm headed back um, pretty soon to show you my All Creatures Great and Small frames up and hopefully some progress on my Christmas um, plans with Holly Berry Farm and my Santa Dev Rider. So maybe a week or two, I'll, I'll check back with you. I also wondered if you would comment. I have plans for the Whip Go Challenge next year to touch my whips and because I'm not doing any starts in 2020 
to, I keep wanting to say 2023, so I have to pause. Um, I'm also not buying any charts. So that is going to be a really big challenge for me, but I feel like I support the designers by stitching their things more than by buying stuff that I can't get to. So I'm uh, hoping to represent lots of different designers in the whips that I show and the projects that I work on. But if you would be interested in seeing a whip parade, it's been a while um, and I showed a lot of it in my mania videos a couple years ago. I've done so few of those mania starts. That's why I'm uh, attempting this challenge just to get those moving out of my whip pile. I don't know what it was. I, I was very new to stitching and very naive in what was actually possible, but I still do like those projects, a lot of them. And um, so if you would be interested in seeing a whip parade, please let me know. But I hope you are doing well. I hope you are um, enjoying the season and the weather. And if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, I hope you're enjoying that weather as well. So as I say at the end of all of my videos, in, in Psalm 90 verse 17, it says, may the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands. I'll see you soon.